Yes, sir! What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ, coming to you live with another NBA update video, man. I got a couple of these coming out today, man. Um, I don't even know if you watch it. If you watch me for 2K, I don't know if we're going to get to a 2K video. We're probably in the middle of the day. But uh, I got at least three of these update videos coming out today because I was, uh, I'm behind a little bit, man, just because it was Father's Day weekend. And you know how it is when, when you're a father, man, on Father's Day weekend. You just have so much, so much things going on. The wife and the family, they took me out, uh, you know, went to, did, just did a few things, went out to eat. Um, went to a baseball game, you know, typical Father's Day stuff, but you know, they want you to relax and all that good stuff. But anyway, enough about me. Let's get to the news. Pipe it up, uh, pipe it up, uh, pipe it up, uh, pipe it up, uh, pipe it up. Now, in case you were on the rock like I was this weekend, man, you already know this. The Philadelphia 76ers have agreed to swap picks with the Boston Celtics. And what the Philadelphia 76ers are doing, the way that they're gonna do this is, they're gonna take their first round pick from next year that they have via the Lakers, and they're gonna send that to Boston, and then they're gonna take Boston's first overall pick, number one overall pick. Everybody knew this year, I mean, they're gonna use that to take Markel Fultz. Now, everybody knew that Markel Fultz was going to be the number one pick this year. I mean, he's the perfect combo guard. He's good size. I think they got him at 6'5 or so. I don't know if he's done growing. He might be 6'6", six, 6'6 six, six, six and a half, 6'7", by the time, you know, he's done growing. But right now, in Philadelphia, I think he's going to be a great fit. I mean, he's a combo guard, so not really a point guard, not really a two guard or what have you. But let's check this out. Let's just check out this roster. I mean, I think he's going to be a good fit with this roster. Um in Philadelphia. Now, they're not saying that they're sending anything else, so I can only surmise for right now that the roster will be intact when he gets there. And and what is he really doing? He's really going to replace Jared Bayless. Um, that's that's what I'm seeing. Now, so, so what you're going to see on the court this year is you're going to see Fultz at the one. You're probably going to see Gerald Henderson at the two if he's still there. He should be there. Robert Covington at the three. I mean, I'm not, not Robert Covington at the three. Robert Covington will be coming off the bench. Ben Simmons at the three. And then you're going to see Embiid and Okafer at the four and five. You know, they're probably going to switch out. Who knows? I don't know. If you're a Philadelphia 76ers fan, do they play a stagnant position or do they just kind of play two bigs? Because I just see both guys on the court. I never really pay attention to what they're supposed to be playing. But um, at any rate, Markel Fultz is a hell of an upgrade over Jared Bayless, in my opinion. And like I said, with Gerald Henderson at the two, Gerald Henderson is going to give you some good defense and um, and hit open shots. Uh, Robert Covington probably played at two position some as well. He'll probably just come in and, and give him some time off or what have you. They may even have Fultz at the two and have uh, Jared Bayless at the one. In, a, in an offense like this where Ben Simmons is expected to run the point, uh, you know, the majority of the time, Ben Simmons is going to be expected to run the point. So I really... I really don't see it mattering who plays point guard. You got somebody like Markel Fultz that can shoot the ball from anywhere on the floor and he can get to the bucket at will. I mean, he, he's pretty much a scoring machine and then you have a distributor like Ben Simmons. It's going to be a situation almost like the Bucks, but this team may actually be on par or even better than the Bucks. I know uh, they said that Joel, Joel Embiid said that with his team after this draft, they were going to be ready to compete and uh, he said that we're not going to be ready to compete like four or five years down the road. We're going to be re ready to compete next season, and we're going to surprise a lot of people. Well, they have definitely surprised a lot of people with, with this pick. Uh, well, well, not the pick. With this trade. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if what he's saying is whole true. Maybe they will be ready to compete this year, but I still don't see them getting out of the East. Pipe it up. Down. Pipe it up. Down. Pipe it up. Down. And our second biggest piece of news from this evening was Jimmy Butler to the Celtics buzz based on more speculation than reality for now. So, a lot of reports from this weekend were coming out that Jimmy Butler is going to the Celtics. This wasn't anything absolute, and I don't see, you know, what they were really trade. Now, what I'm thinking is, once the false trade, well, not the false trades, once they finalize the trade with Philadelphia, what they're probably going to do is take that pick that they get from Philly uh, from the Lakers, because that's probably going to be a high pick, too, because I don't see the Lakers doing very well this year. I don't know if it's a protected pick or not. Or not. But what I, what I expect them to do is take that pick that they get. So Boston will have a first-round pick from this year. They'll have two first-round picks from next year. And they're probably going to send that over to the Bulls and then uh, try to acquire Jimmy Butler. Uh, I think that'll be a good trade straight up, honestly, for them. And with, with that, if they were to do that, 
let's see what that roster would look like. Obviously, we know Jimmy Butler is going to play the two position. Um, and what do you get if that happens, right? What you're going to get is something that looks like, obviously, you're going to have Isaiah Thomas to, at the point. And, and that's why I really expected Boston to either get rid of that pick or do something because you have a fantastic point guard already or a very good point guard already, a scoring point guard. So I don't understand, you know, why they were even talking about drafting folks. I knew it would be just for trade bait or what have you, so I'm not even worried about that. I wasn't even worried about it. I just was little, like, like what are they going to do? Because they, I knew they weren't going to take Jackson, and um, it, it just wouldn't have made sense to take Jackson. I mean, you already have Jay Crowder, and Jay Crowder's not a scorer, but he's a great defender, and and he can score in extreme situations. Like, he can, he can put the ball in the basket uh, with some efficiency. He's not a high-volume scorer or anything like that, but... He, he can get it done. I, I wouldn't call him a 3 and D guy. I don't know if you're a Boston fan or you would call him a 3 and D guy. I would just call him somebody. He can hit an open shot and he can defend your best player in most situations. So what this is really going to look like, you're probably going to have Isaiah Thomas at the one if this goes through and if it happens. Like I said, it's based on more speculation than reality for now. But I, I could definitely see this happening once this whole thing is finalized. They're probably going to send that pick over and boom, it'll probably be done. Um, but you have Isaiah Thomas at the point. Then you'd have two Two good wing defenders. So you're going to have Jimmy Butler at the two. You're going to have Jay Crowder at the three. That's two of the best wing defenders in the league. But you're going to get some offense out of Jimmy Butler. Um, at the four, you probably have Al, Al Horford. I mean, they have him at center. So maybe you have Amir Johnson and then Al, Al Horford. Or you're probably going to have Al Horford and Kelly Olenek, Mr. Poole, you show that. Um, you know, most of the time, or Tyler Zeller. Now, while this makes your team better, I don't think this gets you out of the East. I just... I just don't think that that would happen. Um, now, whoever they're going to get at three, maybe they are going to take Josh Jackson at three, and um, and then that would give them a, a two-way option. Well, at least a scoring option at the three, and then and then you know you still have your team. So that'd be Isaiah Thomas, uh, Jimmy Butler at the two, Josh Jackson at the three. Al Horford and Kelly Olenek or, or Tyler Zeller, I still don't see that getting you out of the East. But, hey, they're shaking things up. They would definitely get better. And uh, maybe they would give the Cavs a hard time. I don't know. I guess we'll just have to see. What you guys think? I walk in the club just to pipe it up. Hey. I stand on the stage and I pipe it up. Hey. Get a regular hotel, I pipe it Go up. Buy a band and I pipe it up. Hey. All right, so as I said, a bit of a short episode for this morning. But we got a couple of episodes coming today. I got to catch up on the news, man. But, um... What do you guys think? This is my question of the day. The two moves that we're talking about, Markel Fultz going to the 76ers, that definitely makes them better. And Jimmy Butler possibly going to the Boston Celtics, that would definitely make them better, uh, you know, uh, along with probably Josh Jackson. But with both of those players, with the acquisition of these players, or if these, if these trades go through, does this make either of these teams good enough to get out of the East? I just don't see it. I could be wrong, but like I said, that's why they play the game in real life and not on paper. So uh, you guys let me know down in the comments, are these moves going to be good enough to get either team out of the East or at least to the Eastern Conference Finals? I could definitely see both teams, I mean, you know, not against each other, obviously, but I could definitely see both teams uh, being good enough to get to the Eastern Conference Finals now. I just don't think it, these moves get you out of the East. But anyway, enough about what I think. Tell me what you think, man. Does this get these guys out of the East? I don't think so, but maybe you do. I'm out of here. Till next time. It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ. Holla! 360 out this month.